is almost Cowboys season. It's that time of year when training camp has begun. It's time for us to talk to you on a regular basis. It's the great Nate Newton and little old me, John Radigan, uh, talking Cowboys football with you. And I tell you, Nate's at training camp, and every time he walks up to somebody at training camp during practice, he puts an arm around him, and he says the title of this show. He puts an arm around him, and he says, what, Nate? Let me tell you something. And boy, yeah, let me you tell be you something, boy. Yeah. Nate's got a lot to tell people, <laughs> do you not? Yes, I do, man. A lot has happened tra- and transpired during this training camp. Good and bad, but you know what? Most of it's good. Yeah, it seems like uh, it's been a pretty positive camp relative to how people felt about the off season. Uh, is that a, is that a fairly accurate assessment? A couple of weeks in, Nate. Uh, definitely. I mean, no big free agent signings. Uh, that we didn't go out and get the wild receiver, uh, the big time running back, or uh, maybe a a coveted cornerback. We stayed pat in what we did, and they just drafted what they felt they needed in two offensive linemen and one defensive lineman, a linebacker. So, uh, But these guys are relatively been healthy. The only setback we've had, John, if you don't mind me speaking up, is Sam Williams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And I think the special team coach was a little bit more upset than anybody because he was going to use Sam probably in some double reverses and with this new kickoff rule and receiving yeah. rule. Uh, he was the most athletic guy pound for pound at his size, 6'3", 6'4", 250 pounds, and mm. just got freakish skills. So uh, uh, the special team coach was hurt by that injury as well as uh, we was looking for big things. We lost Darren Armstrong and a few other guys at the defensive end. So he was going to be the number one replacement, but, uh, due to the fact that he's went down, they went out and got a couple of guys. And now for, uh, third, second round pick, Marshawn uh, uh, Nealon is a big, big, uh, uh, I don't know what word, he's a, he's a big, he's a pressures on this kid. I'll just put it like okay. that. But I that comes you. with being a cowboy. Yes, sir. Yeah, it comes from being a second round pick, too. Yes, right? yes, it does. That, that's a yes, pretty high draft pick. Okay, so we've talked about the real mm-hmm. news, and that's you know, thankfully, the only news is is that uh, Sam Williams won't be available for the year, and that's, that's sad and t- tragic news for the kid. Uh, what about the non news, Nate? What about the non news with CD? Is that I know from a player's standpoint, they don't think about that much. They can't, right? I mean, CD does, but the rest of them don't. Uh, but but is that is that a concern <laughs> at this point? Um, it sounds like they're still talking. Is it a concern that he's not signed? Let me say this right here, Rat, quick. Like, Adam, you notice I started smiling. I, got, I did. It's a, I did. It's a guy named Jalen Tobert, Kevontae Turpin, Tyron Billy Johnson, yeah. Jalen Cropper, Jalen Brooks. They really don't care at this time. No, they're yeah. getting all the reps. They're yeah. the wide receivers that are getting all the reps, and these guys are, are having good days. I mean, they are they're stacking up good days, especially uh, uh, Convante Turpin. He's having a great camp. Uh, the kid uh, Tyron Billy Johnson, yeah. he's floated around the league a little bit. He's having a good camp. All you look for is to stack good day after good day. But back to the uh, original question. Uh, they are working on things. And that's what we get from Mr. Jones and from Stephen Jones is they are working on things. The door is open for a conversation at any time. It seems like both parties knock at different times. Uh, I think a week ago, uh, Mr. Uh, Stephen Jones gave an offer and within two days, uh, CD Lamb camp fire back an- another offer. So what I'm hearing, they're not that far apart. They're working on a little technical terms. Uh, probably uh, a meal here, a meal there. Now, that's easy for me for me to say, but me to come up with a meal here and a meal there. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, they're working on it. And for his DAC camp, uh, I don't, I don't, yeah, I think DAC is set at one number and that's it. Yep. Yep. And so, and again, his isn't as big a concern. He's not holding out. Uh, right. It'd be nice to not have him, you know, be you know playing in the last you know seat last year of his deal. Yeah. But if he is, he is, and they they deal yeah. with that. Then they don't have any fall off there. Um, so with regard to CD, think back to times uh, when when for example Emmett 
was holding out. Held right? out uh, yes. Okay. So I know you're right. Obviously, the people who are least concerned about it are the other wide receivers because right. they get more opportunity <laughs> and they'll gladly take right. that. But what about the rest of the team? And what about team leadership? Is there um is there any sort of angst toward the management? Like, come on, man, get this done. We need this guy. I mean, is there and again, I know they haven't played games yet. So, but were you guys that way when Emmett ended up missing no. a couple of games? That is when the problems start. Uh, John is when you get into the regular season and you cannot run your uh, offense, especially into n- today's new NFL. Remember, it took them four or five games for CD and Dak to get on the same page and start running with any type of efficiency. Now he's not here, even though they have went through that together. They still need to get thirty or forty reps in before the season starts, so they can get back, get their timing back. So uh, who is the man? Right now, Brandon Cooks has been the man in training camp. He's been the most consistent target for Dak, him and Jake Ferguson. But when you need that big play or when you need that player to say, hey, I got two guys on me, now it opens up Ferguson up the scene. I got two guys on me and it gets uh, uh, a Cooks over the top. But now everybody can just play base defense on us. And if you got the talent on the, in, the, in the back end, you can kind of hold us down because we don't have that receiver that can demand extra coverage. So that is when it'll start, you know, the week of Cleveland, because Cleveland has a defense led by Miles Garrett and need I say any more. Right. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. How about this question? I've heard conflicting reports, and I want to know from my man, Nate, from a guy who's eyeballed so many of these over the years. How has Trey Lance looked? Okay. Okay. That is yeah. it. That's it. Okay. Uh, the kid kind of what is, uh, yeah. he's struggling. He's struggling with the outside routes. Uh, his decision making in the red zone is not there yet. This, let, let me say this right quick. Like he was, he was thrown out with the four announce. And this kid played virtually no high school ball, very little college ball, and he's thrusting into the biggest line. Like he, he would have been better off going somewhere to Detroit or somewhere like that. But he came to a Forty Niners team. That's like coming to the Cowboys or coming to the, the spotlight is on you, and it's so big because these teams have such a great history of great quarterbacks, and then they gave up a few picks to get you. So, yeah. but when they found their missing relevant, that turned out to be very relevant. Yeah. They basically, uh, the head coach and the, and, and, and the general manager got together, and say, "This is our guy. Let's let." They 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 basically ignored this kid in the house. Mm. This kid sitting in meetings. They basically ignored him. And now the Cowboys give him a fourth round pick to add to those picks that has already been given to him for him to be drafted as high as he was. And now you're trying to not only get a kid uh, physically ready, you got to get this kid mentally ready that you can play in this league. And right now it just hasn't clicked. Now we got. Three preseason games, am I correct? Yes, you okay, do. so now we got three preseason games. He has to play a lot. Uh, Cooper Rush, we love you. We know who you are. And I'm all for Cooper Rush because he's not yeah. doing anything wrong in this camp. No, no. To, to, to give up his second spot. But if you don't play Trey, Trey Lance uh, all but maybe a quarter in this first game, uh, a, whole, a whole half in the second game, uh, something is not right. I mean, you got to get this kid, uh, and you got to be willing to uh, kind of ignore the bad. Not, t- not don't. You still have to teach him, but yeah. you got to kind of ignore the bad and don't make it as you know if he has any. Uh, and and when you got to overpraise the good because yeah. I just think this kid is kind of mentally beat up too, Rad. Yeah, you see the skill there, Nate. He got skill. Yes, he got yeah. skill. You you, you see it. Every now and then, you don't see it always. You know, you know, we got athletic ability. That, that, that's 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 a given. But yeah. it's, it's uh, some of his throws, you know, it's just his decision making. Yes, yeah, he don't see as well, and that's just cause uh, no college. Uh, yeah, Bill Parcells 
used to tell you, if you give me a guy with two and a half, three years of college, that's my guy. That guy with, 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 with less than two years of college, man, that, that, that's only what? They, they play 12 games? You only get maybe 18 games? You need at least 30 games, man, yeah. so you can see the action, man. Yeah, yeah. And this kid hasn't seen the action. Right, right. On the other side of the ball, how has uh, what have you noticed about the change in the defense, which I think is is significant? Linebackers, linebackers, yeah. linebackers, yeah. linebackers, yeah. linebackers. <laughs> Li- let me tell you something. We have real linebackers. How about that? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, as great a job as Marquise Bell did last year, we knew that some team in the playoffs is going to say, hey, that's run right at number 14. Yeah. And they, and they did it. Uh, you know, Coach Zim is going to ask these guys to do their job and nothing more. You may see late in the season, maybe game 15, a game 16, a guy may try something. But those first 10 to 12 games, he's going to ask them the famous Bill Belichick's word, do your damn job. If you do your job, this defense will function. And it, he will put enough wrinkles in this defense that you don't have to run off uh, shotgunning on your own, so uh, moonlighting on your own. So he's asking guys to do their job. He's, uh, you know, he's never really happy. You know, I, you know, after the blue white practice, uh, they hired Zim. It looked pretty good. And, ah, it was all right. Ah, we got this, but that's coaching. That's coaching. Yeah. It's always something you can do better, but. Linebacker, linebacker, you got Michael Parsons, you got uh the De- uh Overshone when he's back from his yeah. injury, you got Damone yeah. Clark another year in. Um uh, Maris Lafafa, Lafo Fou- the Leof- kid Leofau, I think. Yeah. That Leofau. dude is nice. Yeah. He yeah. is nice. He is quick, he is fast. Uh, you know, and then we got uh uh I'm trying to say it. Eric Kendrick, he's our starter, he's been out. Yeah, a couple of days yeah. with a bad back. Yeah, but he he's our starter. Uh, Johnson, Jason Johnson. Now this Willie Harvey, a tackling running machine. Nice. Number uh, uh number fifty five. He he is in there. Trust nice. me. When 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 Kendrick went down, he's the next guy at Mike Backer. Uh, you got Buddy Johnson, number 57. You got Brock uh, Morgison. All of these guys have shown the ability to get up in there, jam up some guards, take on some some fullbacks, which Hunter Lemke and this guy, big tight end fan, has been bringing the thunder on yeah. that offensive side. So it's been very competitive. But to say that, Rad, I mean, we just looking at guys banging in each other. They know each other. Right? At this point, I think it's about five or six padded practices. He just can't. Thursday, this coming Thursday, will be the Rams are coming here. So they'll get to beat up on somebody new. And then that Sunday, they'll play the Rams in a preseason game. So we'll get to get another perspective against other players. Yeah. And these preseason games, it's interesting because they, uh, they don't seem to even have like they weren't that big a deal when you played, but they don't even seem to have that kind of uh, of, uh, of juice anymore, it's right? Not on, it's only not a big deal when you have a veteran team. Okay. It's uh, but when you don't have a veteran team, uh, you got a lot of guys. We trying to work in a lot of guys on the offensive line. We trying to bring in a new defense, and like I was telling Mickey Spagnola this morning. You're 11 11. That's the starting offense, starting defense. That's 22. You take another six guys uh, that you really like, and that's 30. Number 31, all the way to number 90, they better yeah. be worried. You better yeah. be competing. And you better be doing the best you can because that's who you will see on that field, number 31 right. to about to number 90. They better be competing. They better be trying to, uh, you know, as they say, go into their bag. As these new guys like to say, you better go deep into your packs and pull out your <laughs> tricks because because it does mean something. Yeah, of course, for those guys and for the young guys, you're right. I mean, so we've got these two young guys on the offensive line, uh, yes. uh, Guyton and BB. Uh, it right. seems to me like Guyton would have a greater opportunity uh, to to 
make that transition than Beebe, who's who's playing a completely new position. Yes, he he's a uh, guy that's been for the last three days had a chest cold. Okay. He showed up yesterday and worked out with Britt Brown for the first time. Uh, but they've been keeping him from around the team because they don't want that to spread within the team, and you don't yep. want to be fighting. You know, with 10 or 15 guys out, you never can get a real good look because nine times I've seen when these sicknesses happen, you notice they always take the starters yeah. and, the, and the valuable backups. It don't ever hit the, the 50th, 80th guy. It yeah. always hit that that one through 25 or one through 30 guy. So uh, he's just getting back. Uh, he's doing okay. Um, BB is struggling with the snaps. Yeah. So that is Brock. Brock Hoffman's job. This somebody. It's Brock Hoffman's job to lose. He can't lose because there ain't no competition right now. And yeah. That's just being yeah. honest. Because the kid, yeah. it's not that the kid won't get it down. You just don't know when it all come together for BB. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong. I thought I heard Mickey reference this. You'd remember it. You were on this line yeah. when Step came in. Mark Stepnoski uh, in your era. Uh, he was a con- he was converted to a center, and and he didn't yes, he yeah. didn't take right away to it either, right? Uh, nah, uh, step was is a different beast. It, yeah. You know, we didn't do a lot of shotgun. Remember, it was straight yeah. to the butt. I mean, yeah. not straight to the butt, but you know what yeah. I'm talking about. I know what you're Hands saying. Hands under yeah. the butt. Yeah. <laughs> Hands up under the butt. You know, so they didn't do a lot of shotgun. So, but step, step is a unique individual. It didn't take him long. It took him just a. It took him a, a couple of weeks. But man, one step got in there. He he. You know, he did everything at Pittsburgh. Step was all world, man. Yeah. Especially a brilliant mind with this kid. BB is smart. You don't have yeah. problems with pointing out the strength of the defense or the possible blitzers. It's just snapping that ball right now. Yeah. It's not one, uh, not an easy thing for him. Yeah, yeah, you got to learn that, and you got to figure that yeah. out, and you got to also do it right when there's another three hundred pound man bearing down on you. <laughs> Come on, I mean, three hundred full grown, yeah. full grown man. Yeah, yeah, yeah growling. Growling it yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. All right, so here's one thing I've heard that I, I like, a development I believe uh, is true, is that uh, most mornings uh, Micah and, and Zim have coffee or breakfast together. Mm, I, I haven't seen it because we are not privy, privy to, you know, in there with the players all okay. the time. Okay. But, you know, we, we were worried that Micah should have been in camp. It don't look like it when he's lining up. He seems like he knows where to line up at. He seems like he's holding his responsibilities at this point. So, it, you know, maybe they haven't, uh, you know, late night coffee and tea yeah. cakes and all of that. I don't <laughs> know, man. I, I, just, I just want them to be ready when the season starts, you know? Sure, sure. And uh, you, when you were mentioning the linebackers, you mentioned Micah. Uh, yes. So, which is good in my mind. Uh, but is but 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 obviously he there's still gonna he's still gonna rush the passer some too. Is he gonna is he gonna be more of a sort of hybrid, you know, edge rusher slash linebacker? Yes, that's what he is. That's what he should have stayed. Yeah. Uh it's only a few of us believe that he should have always played that linebacker position because uh he's and he's lost weight. He's he's figured out gaining five to ten pounds when the when the problem that helped wore him down, losing yeah. the weight. And not being into fray every time. I mean, when you when you two hundred and forty five pounds and you talking about running possibly into a guy three hundred pounds at least forty times out of sixty reps, that, that that over the over the year, that can that can take a lot out of you. Oh my god. And, and your game is predicated on speed, quickness, and then power. So uh yeah, this will help him, you know, because he can drop back in coverages. He can uh, blitz from different points and angles, and then he can also still line up at one of the deepest bands uh, outside of a tackle and, and rush the pass. So, uh, and I think that'll help him be more doable as the season go on. I saw that uh, I saw on the social media that you went over to Thousand Oaks uh, and 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 walked around the campus where you had at least a couple of training camps. I think right. Uh, yeah, definitely. I went back to the old, and, they, and and they've got new buildings around these older buildings, but I like how they kept the antique buildings, and they still use them as dorms. And I'll be going back over there periodically just taking pictures, uh, doing a little snapshot of the field and where we used to practice at and where Coach Landry, uh, you know, used to give his speeches and stuff. And, man, it's just 
you you never forget it, man. That uh, that's where I started from, man. And that's yeah. what I used to when I was a kid. And they used to show the Dallas Cowboys. You'd see thousands of those California with the outside weights. Yes. Now I went back there. I think it might have been around the time that the teams first started going to Oxnard, and yes. then weight machines were still out there. Are they? They're not right, still out right. there. They're, they're gone not still now. They're now, are they? They're gone now. They got big yeah. baseball fields. I mean, okay. you know, alumni has gotten bigger and more swackier, a little, little more paychecks coming yeah, yeah. out of them. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'll take some more pictures, man, and share. Uh, but I'm, I'm telling you, Thousand Oaks, it's, and the thing about it, when I went over there, it was 90 degrees up on the hill, we call yeah, it. it then by the time there. I got back down in the valley to Oxnard, it was like 75 degrees. Yeah. I mean, and that is only a, like a 25-mile ride, brother. Yeah. Uh, you know, from up if the that, hill to yeah. the bottom of the hill, man. Yeah. It was literally cold after you spent, after I spent an hour up there. Yeah, that's so, fun. So, man, but so, uh, I, I'm going to tell you, it's all good. Tell me this, Nate. Uh, your, what's your training camp day like? Are you? I know you obviously have some media responsibilities with the, right. the Blue Star folks, but are you also out on the field at all? They're the dot com folks now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know what right, I mean. Yeah, right, right out of the blue. Why I heard Blue Star so long? <laughs> oh, it's that's pretty blue, good, right? Has it, the blue has it been Star a minute? People. Oh uh, yeah, it's been a minute, baby. Since you, <laughs> it's the dot com folks, but anyway, dot com. yeah, yeah. Uh, today, like we did a show with Mick Shots, and I got a show after this show. Uh, you know that that we do, and but uh, yeah, man, it, it's pretty full. We got practice at one. Uh, it's a be yeah one at one thirty y'all time. We will have practice in uh, and then we're off. And that's how I get to get on this, get on my motorcycle and and go to to Thousand Oaks and go up into the hills and stuff like that. And you know, some days are fuller than others, you know, because I'm a subcontractor. So, uh, yeah, but it, it's fun, man. It's hey, fun. so uh, you didn't ride the bike out there, did you? Ah, uh, no, no, I put it on the back of my truck, man. Okay, yeah, I okay. can't ride that far, man. I ain't I'm got an say. iron butt. I may got I'm a big say. butt, but it ain't <laughs> iron. <laughs> not to say. Oh man, that's awesome. That's great. Well, does it bring back memories for you and or when you see what the players are going through? I know you easier, can. Easier, nicer, better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's easier, nicer, and better. I, I love how they practice. I love the schedule that they have. Kids cannot, when kids, some of them are tired and they're wore out, you're not telling the truth. You're not telling the truth. You're not tired and wore out. Now, you may be a little mentally fatigued for all the, you know, installs and heavy work, but you got on the field, you practice uh, only no more than two days in pads, and then you have a walkthrough, and then you virtually off the next day for 24 solid hours. 24 solid hours. Yeah, so these these kids, oh, uh, man, uh, you know, I had uh, Marquis Bell, to, man, my body, my body a little tired. I said, yeah, it ain't, it ain't from practice. Maybe something <laughs> else done showed up. <laughs> you you didn't back in your day were there did you do two a days every day yeah every day e every the, day for, there for were the, two at least for the first the first 10 days it was two a days wow at least for the first 10 days yeah 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 when you mentioned yeah go ahead we would have full gear on in the morning and shoulder pads and helmets in the evening so it was two a days for 10 yeah. days yeah, that's unbelievable. At least. Yeah. Yeah. That now that'll get your body tired. Plus that plus the middle drill. Yeah, the middle drill, you know, we open up with that for the and I think he more did that for the media to get the media hooping and hot. Ah, look how Jimmy <laughs> got a blood bath going on the first day. You know. <laughs> yeah. He he they slapping each other on the back for that. Yo, y'all think you have to get beat up as coaches. I should have ran over Jimmy a couple of times to let him see how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> he got positive reports out of all of us, though, man. Uh, yeah, we couldn't yeah, believe yeah. the way you were hitting. Man, Jim, Jimmy handles them right. Boy, he's, he puts his foot down. Yeah, it was yeah. Nate Newton and the rest of us putting our foot down. Oh, he was doing over there clapping his hands. <laughs> <laughs> when they do hit, you know, you talked about the four or five. You know, we're almost two weeks in, right? And we're only talking about four yeah. or five padded practices. 
Right. But is it? It seems to me like the players even are excited about the opportunity to hit. Yeah, they're they getting in there and they're getting after each other, man. They're they're doing a nice job. These guys, for what it is, these kids are doing what they have to do. You know, a lot, a lot of guys have missed practice. You've had guys go down with tweaks and stuff like that. Uh, uh, Luke Schoolmaker, uh, McQuamu, uh the safety. Yeah, they had a few guys banged up, but for the most part, uh, the first round pick and Sam are the only ones that have missed some some uh, a lengthy amount of times. Luke, Luke Schoolmaker and Sam is out, and then Shamu. Let me slow down. Edoga, Chamor, Chamu, C U C H U M. He the tackle, the left tackle, okay. the starting yeah. left tackle, has yeah. missed a little bit of time. Okay. Edoga. Okay. Edoga, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, man, it's been fun. I appreciate your insights and your thoughts. And I want to we'll talk again after the Rams ex- extravaganza here between the practices yes, yes. and the game on Sunday. And we'll we'll right. get together again early next week and let let's figure out how this thing's, you know, looking. At that point, yeah. you're you're beginning to shape up as a team. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Yeah. You're so right, uh, John. Yeah, yeah. All right, big dog. Thank you, Nate. Man, I wish I was out there with you, brother. All right, tell your tell your daughter we say hello, man, and tell your wife get some sleep. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> I will, brother. Thank you, man. All right, uh, you will.